Hello everybody and welcome back to another blind commentary of Made in Abyss. There's the outro time if you get to click for that. Uh yeah, it's the show has finally started to actually delve into the abyss itself, which is now going to be interesting to see how will the story actually carry throughout the travel in the abyss because it seems like a fairly straightforward idea, just head down to the levels of abyss, but I just wonder how exactly they will carry out this story. But without further ado, let us begin with it proper. That's a very, very cool way to use the grappling hook, those grappling uh, hook arms already. Just use them to make a field of detection like that. That's that's a pretty clever use for that. I I know that I, Super Ipatch Wolf in his video about why you should watch Made in Abyss, he mentioned that there will be some really cool uses for the grappling hook arms, but I didn't expect this. This is really quite a clever and rather ingenious way to use them, I must say. I just had an interesting idea. Since the curse of the abyss is what is uh, is the reason that Rico is using glasses, what if if they descend down far enough? What if that means that uh, Rico can stop using glasses altogether? That'd be a really interesting change in her character. He said to the distortion in the force field. So does that mean, what kind of force field exactly is there? Like, I know there's the curse of the abyss that is kind of lingering there, but what exactly is this force field that he is referring to? That is what is catching my curiosity right now. Is that distortion, that force field really, is it good, strong enough to actually carry light through the lower depths of the abyss? Because that would mean, that would really give a sense of why there is vegetation. Well, okay, there's vegetation that doesn't require uh, natural sunlight, but generally that... Generally, vegetation requires sunlight to be, to, well, to actually thrive, so, um, I wonder just how strong that force field is, or at the very least, how strong the distortion is. <laughs> That's an interesting also thing, does Reg need to eat? I, I don't think he does. He's a robot after all, but well, I suppose we might see. <laughs> so it is really like I, I I was wondering that whether they were going to catch how much food they would carry with them and how much catching actually they would need to do on the way. And it's pretty interesting that actually looking at the general structure that the show is going for right now, it's going to be very much just like a travel series, very much focused on traveling. And that's actually, I'm very much fine with that, but it's... It certainly is something that I didn't expect, but if we just get to see their day-to-day -day life, then that's... It certainly is strong enough to carry it, maybe carry the series alone. But I, I have a feeling that there's more to the show than that. Uh, this also kind of very well shows how experienced uh, Rico is that she has been doing her homework that to know that know a recipe just off the top of her head. It's not that it's that hard to really memorize such a simple recipe, but it is it goes some some way at the very least to show that 
she is definitely not new to the whole cave raiding thing. This is probably not even her first night out and definitely not her first time cooking that kind of soup. よけと共に捕まえに出るあ、レグ、夜明けから<笑><笑> It's um, pretty funny that he is basically making an open threat that I'm coming to get you, kids. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Oh. It's actually, again, kind of a surprise that he can use that, that hook shot is actually, or grappling hook, whatever. I'm gonna call it hook shot, uh, because that's how it looks like. It is pretty interesting that it actually has enough force to actually stun creatures. That makes it quite a formidable weapon, actually, as, as a matter of fact. Which is rather surprising, I was more expecting it to be only utility, but it is very... Very quite a considerable weapon as well, apparently. That's pretty, pretty nifty, I must say. That's actually pretty interesting formation for the second layer to be because uh, looking at that, looking at it, uh, the hole, ho the hole there, it didn't look like there could be a lot of light that could pass down the f down f or the bottom or lower levels, which I guess we'll just have to see whether there's enough light there for vegetation to grow. That's... That was really quite odd. That's... I have no idea. That... that Reg heard, her, heard his own voice. That's... Really suspicious, I must say. I, I do wonder what exactly that was. Oh, that's interesting. His eyes can actually zoom in like that. That's, or I I assume that he is zooming in his eyes. That's rather unique, I must say. Another benefit from his robot features. <laughs> Why why does this show make so many dick jokes? That's really off putting how how frugal it is about these kinds of perverted humor. あの、あの。なんだ。ごめんなさい。それはダメなんです。え、それはないぜ。これは最後の授業なの。うん。That's an interesting character trait for Rico to show up. That even though they would 
freely receive the help, that she's denying the help and instead rather wants to upkeep her own, her own, you know, kind of a promise that she actually tries to do this on her, well, not on her own completely, but with only the help of Reg to go, go along. That's certainly a very different. It's an interesting character trait. Pretty interesting that of the two white whistles we know about, both of them are women. That's pretty interesting that the show is very egalitarian in that respect. That women definitely are... They, it doesn't appear that there's any difference between the sexes at the very least, which is, you know, it's a trait for the show. Not, not necessarily saying whether it's good or bad, it's just interesting, that's all. ただの命の恩人すごい。しかし、ハボルグ、特に言いよどむようなことには思えないが。白笛王前に気をつけてくれ。詳しくは俺から言えない。リコには辛いことがあるかもしれん。覚悟して言ってくれ。大丈夫です。私白笛に会いたいし、お母さんのこととかお母さんの風情を見つけた時のこととか聞かなきゃいけないし。about the curse of the abyss, this has been kind of bothering me. Can you actually just go go up slowly and get acclimated to the effects and when you have acclimated the effects completely, you go up one more layer and just slowly build the resistance that way. That's something that's bothering me about the show, but I doubt that we're gonna get an answer. I mean, I, 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 I can actually imagine the show giving me an answer to that question quite easily, even. So, yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's an interesting way to put it. Every the, the fact that they are just saying that they are netherworld's lost children. That's very off-putting way of something about that. Just sounds really sounds really kind of kind of disturbing. Like. The fact that they're, or not the fact, but the saying that they are Netherworld's lost children, that's really intriguing. Don't know exactly what that means, but it's, it's something, it's really something. It, it, and it is also connected to the um, saying that, uh, that we heard uh, Rico say that uh, that everything that uh, everything eventually returns to the abyss. That's it's it's something. I wonder if that's connected. <laughs> I really much I really like how. We get such introspective um, monologue from Reg, even though I was, it was originally looking like Rico would be the main character and whose main, main point of view that we would be viewing the show from. It's pretty cool to see that Reg gets quite a bit of character development as well, and quite a lot of monologue time for himself, because his existence, mere existence is already quite a bit different from Rico's, and it certainly is cool, eh? I don't know. It's interesting to hear um, the ponderings of Reg. Oh. And now I'm sad, the show's over. <laughs> oh, that's... I, I, I'm getting really inter invested in the show already. It's really pulling me in. It's unfortunate that it's over now. Oh, well, until the next episode I record.
Well, time for the outro. Yep, time for this. So, the show is pretty fantastic. It's really, it, the show has already kind of captivated me. It's really interesting because even though I had feeling that it has a very much like a traveling show, traveling series built vibe to it, where they are just traveling and we get to see them try to survive off of the nature. Even though the show has that kind of feeling to it, it still has a lot of the exploration and the unknown element to it, which makes it really interesting to see just what then what show the show has to uh, has to show us because there's just. The show has a lot of imagination to it, so it will be really cool to see how exactly the different the different layers that will be because they really do exist between outside of the man mankind's reach, and they will be quite wild to see. Like even that bird that we saw in the final few minutes or final minute of the show, it was looked really kind of interesting. So it's. Hard to describe, but I really quite dig the show. It's really has it has captivated me quite well. So I will be really interested to see continue the show. I'm glad that I don't have to wait. <laughs> uh, I don't have to wait a week for the next or two or three days for the next episode. But um, yeah, it's pretty pretty top notch quality content. I must say, I I quite like like it. It's, yeah, it's good. With that being said, I thank you all very much for watching. I hope to in the future have a great day and stay awesome. Then move out. Thanks for watching.